Hello, everybody, and, um, and welcome to Euro Practices webinar series on advanced packaging. I'm Ramzi Saleem, a Euro Practice lead at the National Institute, where we focus on system integration and advanced atomics packaging. This webinar continues our series where we step into the world of advanced photonics packaging. In the last episode, we looked at fiber to chip edge coupling. In today's episode, we'll be looking at grating couplers. In fact, the next um, four, this episode included, with the next three as well, we will be looking in more detail at grating couplers. But before we jump into that, let's get familiar with the Zoom platform. I think um, most of you are probably already familiar with Zoom. Um, essentially, if you want to ask questions, the best way to do that is to click on the Q&A button. In the Q&A button, there's a whole section where you can put in your questions and they get collated for a question and answer session at the end of the talk or after the talk session. But without further delay, let me introduce you to um, my co-host, uh, Dr. Francesco Flores, the head of the training programs, and um, Luca Zagaglia, who, hello, hello, who you, you're helping develop the grating couplers technology here at Tyndall, aren't you, uh, Luca? Yep. Yes. Um, Francesco, over to you for the um, grating couplers. About the, you want to tell us about the content for today? Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, hi, everybody. So today we start uh, talking about grating couplers. As Ramsey uh, told you just a few seconds ago, we have uh, four webinars uh, plan uh, to talk uh, quite deeply uh, about uh, grating couplers. This is just part one. So we will introduce you about, again, the mod mismatch. This is a concept that we already uh, told you uh, during the previous webinar. Then the main features, uh, and uh, the key parameters, uh, geometrical and electromagnetic. So we will show you how to manage the electromagnetic behavior of the scattering processes behind the grating coupling, uh, opportunately tuning the geometrical features of uh, these devices. How then to read uh, these uh, electromagnetic parameters in terms of the spectrum and uh, some uh, additional hints about the scattering process. Then uh, we will jump uh, deeply into the uh, coupling and uh, optimization and packaging techniques. And I will show you the two geometrical approaches that you can use, vertical and horizontal fiber coupling, and uh, two examples of final devices. And obviously at the end, the Q&A session. So let's start again, main problem, mod mismatch. We have a fiber with a core that is of the order of 10.5 micron and the mode inside the core with a mode field diameter around 10.4 microns. We want to shine the light that is running inside the core on a grating coupler and the dimension of the grating coupler are average 12 by 20 microns. Then we have the SOI. So in this case, our web guides has a geometrical dimensions around two order of magnitudes smaller with respect to the core of the fiber. We are talking 450 times 220 nanometers. So again, we have to face this mod mismatch. How can we do that? We have, as I told you before, two geometrical approaches. The first one here on the left is the so-called vertical fiber coupling. So we have a fiber that is vertically displaced on top of the peak. Here you can see the grating coupler. The main disadvantage of this type of coupling is the fact that we can apply a torque on the fiber. And since the fiber is made of glass, we can break it quite easily. So we need to help the fiber with the external uh, sustain that in this case means that we are increasing the difficulties of the packaging. A better way to couple the light on top of the grating coupler is to use the so-called horizontal uh, geometrical approach. In this case, we have a fiber that is uh, horizontally placed on top of the grating coupler and uh, we polish uh, the end facet of the fiber 
with a specific angle, in this case it's 40 degrees, in order to achieve total internal reflection. So what happened is that the light traveling inside the core hit at the end of the fiber the end facet and is totally internal reflected downward towards the grating coupler. The grating coupler can collect this light and inject properly the light inside the silicon waveguide. Main advantages, let's say we have quite moderate insertion loss. We are talking about 2.5 dBs, which means uh, roughly 56-70% of transmission. Then we have uh, a 1 dB bandwidth uh, of the order of 30 nanometers, so the alignment tolerances are quite relaxed. But what this is really important is the fact that the grating coupler is polarization sensitive. So remember that you have to tune, design specifically the grating coupler for TE or TM mode. So this is a side view of the entire grating coupler structure and starting from the bottom, there is the first layer that is the silicon substrate. Usually it has a thickness of 100 of microns. Then there is the bottom oxide layer with a typical thickness of two microns. And the last layer is this, another silicon layer with a thickness of 220 nanometers. Then in this layer, the grating coupler is created. And as you can see, the periodic structure usually has a length of 20 microns. And then the other key parameters are the edge depth and the period, so the distance between two homologous points. The other key parameters are related to the electromagnetic field that strikes the grating coupler. So first of all, the polarization. In this case, the electric field oscillates on a direction that points out of your screen. <clears throat> then the mode has a dimension that fits the geometrical dimension of the grating, and it has a certain angle of incidence. In this way, we are able to couple the light inside the waveguide in the channel that we call in this slide CE, so coupling efficiency, and we are able to reduce the losses due to the back reflection or the R channel and the light that passes through the grating without interacting with it, that is the T channel or transmission channel. Exactly, so again uh, super important is remember the two key parameters, in this case uh, you can see here the grating coupler and it's fundamental that uh, your beam profiles heat and shine completely inside the geometrical cross-section of the grating coupler. In this case you can be sure that 100% of the light is scattered properly from your grating coupler inside the waveguide and then again the polarization state. Here we have a TE polarized light so it means that the electric field is oscillating parallel to the silicon tits. This is fundamental. Yeah, and uh, the electromagnetic spectrum is quite important to see the behavior of the interaction of the light with this type of structure. And as you can see, the grating coupler is able to couple one uh, wavelength uh, efficiently. In this case, it's called the working wavelength and it is 1550 nanometers, as you can see from the dashed black line. This is a video from one of our simulations. As you can see, there is the light that comes from the top and interact with the grating. Some of the light is back reflected, some passes through the gratings, and the majority of it, in this case 56%, is injected inside the waveguide. At the bottom of, of this image, you can see that there is the Bragg lobe that basically links the working wavelength with the period of the grating coupler and theta, that is the angle of incident of the light. Yeah, exactly. So now that we have in mind the geometrical and electromagnetic key parameters of the grating coupler, you can maybe better see why is then so important to align properly the fibers, no matter if single fibers has uh, here on the left or fiber arrays on top of the grating coupler. If you consider the basic procedure, what you have is imagine two fibers, in this case, uh, single fibers, but the concept is the same also for fiber arrays. You need two goniometers and uh, two branches, both able to move uh, 
resorting to six degrees of freedom. In this case, you can scan the surface of the silicon peak. You can find the grating cutler. This is called passive alignment. Then resorting to an external source of light, usually a laser source. You can then finally align the core of the fiber on top of the center of your grating coupler in order to maximize the injection of the light or the collection of the light in or out from your waveguide. In this case, in the central image, you can see, for example, a array of fibers that is coupled on top of a silicon peak. In this case, you can see that we are using the vertical geometry and it's clear that from the mechanical point of view, as I told you before, this is not the best option. You can break, for example, the fiber here, while here at the contact surface between the fiber array and the silicon peak, you can see the epoxy. Now on the right, an example of a, of a fully packaged device. Again, this is not the best solution. It's also not easy to take with your hand a package like this. So how can we improve from the mechanical point of view the fiber coupling using grating coupler? We can resort to the so-called horizontal geometry. In this case, the core of the fiber is horizontal, which means that the fiber is parallel with respect to the surface of the peak. What is yes. important in this case is that uh, you can handle easily your peak. Yeah, here the, the only critical point is that you have to be sure that the polishing angle of your fiber must respect the total internal reflection condition. So the light that travels inside the core of the waveguide and strikes the tilt facet of the fiber must have an incident angle respect to the normal of the facet that is higher than the critical angle. You can see that is roughly 43 degrees in this case, plus the, the polishing angle, in this case 40 degrees, allows you to get the 10 degrees angle that you want to couple efficiently the light inside the grating coupler. Now, of course, we have uh, tolerances when we're trying to align this fiber respect to the grating coupler. For example, in this case, we can see uh, the alignment tolerances respect to the, to the grating coupler position. And so if we put an offset between the fiber and the grating coupler, as we can see, the, the alignment tolerances are quite relaxed, in this case, 2.5 microns. And the other tolerances that we have to consider are the one related to the roll angle. So if you imagine to uh, have an axis that passes through the core of the fiber, then if you rotate the fiber about this axis, then you get that you have a tolerance of 2.5 degrees. Right. So with all these concepts in mind, we can <coughs> see two examples of horizontal geometry. In particular here, top right, you can see two single fibers that have been properly aligned on top of a grating coupler in and out. And here in the SEM image, you can also see again the epoxy that we use to fix and secure the fiber on top of the peak. If you want to increase the number of channels, you can use uh, fiber arrays. And here again, you can see an example. So we have a fiber array for the input and another fiber array for the output. From the mechanical point of view, this is super advantageous because your system is almost flat. And again, you can see here the epoxy that we use to glue the peak and uh, the fiber arrays together. How can we do that? I already introduced you to our machines in the lab that is called How to Aligner. Uh, mainly the process is divided into two steps. The first step is the passive alignment. So we just uh, resorting to two cameras, put geometrically the optical fiber on top of the peak. Then next step, resorting to an external source, we use a laser source. We just uh, refine the alignment, now active alignment. So we uh, move uh, super carefully the optical fiber on top of the peak till we maximize the signal that is uh, injected inside uh, the grating couplers. Final devices. Again, on the left, an example of uh, uh, fiber array couple resorting to grating coupler on a silicon peak, uh, vertical geometry, 
let's see again that this is not from the mechanical point of view the best solution you can break the fiber on the right we have to thank speaks up and san diego for this image uh, this is uh, uh, an example of the integrated photonic educational kit you can see instead here an horizontal uh, geometrically coupled fiber array on top of a silicon peak. It's clear that uh, the horizontal geometry is the best one. You can just imagine how easy it is to handle this solution with respect uh, to this solution. So that's the story with uh, the grating couplers. Thank you very much, Francesco. Thank you very much, uh, Luca. Um, that was very interesting and I have a few questions myself actually. Uh, but before we jump into the Q&A session, uh, let me just tell you a bit about what's coming up. Um, again, you know, this is a webinar series. Um, um, so we've been looking at previous episodes of design rules, fiber to edge coupling. Today we're looking at um, grading couplers. We've got other episodes about uh, thermal management, laser welding, um, uh, process of fiber attaches. But, um, but yeah, so for the next few episodes, we've got a dedicated uh, few sessions to grating couplers. In fact, next episode um, is uh, about uh, a special type of grating coupler, the apodized grating coupler. Is that right, Francesco? Yeah, uh, let's say next episode, uh, we will focus on how to improve the coupling efficiency. And uh, we will show you essentially two ways uh, the first one is to increase the thickness of the grating coupler, adding an additional, it's called overlay uh, of silicon. The second approach is uh, uh, to switch from the standard grating coupler, so pitch constant, to an apodized grating coupler, which means essentially that the pitch is changing along the grating coupler. That's all right. Uh, if you switch to the next slide, um, and I can just show people here to remind um, folk. So the next episode, like uh, Francesco is saying, is about a particular type of grating coupler. Um, and that will be on Tuesday, the 19th of May. Make sure you register early on so that you don't uh, miss out as the spots are limited. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel if you've missed an episode, and that way you can watch um, previous webinar episodes just your practice on YouTube. Uh, to find out about the events that are happening, you wanna follow us on LinkedIn. Again, your practice on LinkedIn, that's where we'll be advertising the events. Uh, if you wanna find out about how to access our um, capabilities and facilities, you can either directly email us um, on europractice.gateway at tindall.ie uh, or go to the website and you can find out there's a lot of information on the europractice.ic.com uh, website. Um, but yeah, so the Q&A session here, I see some questions coming in. 